Hey everybody, uh, Django Fed here. Um, we're having some really nasty weather down here in Florida. Uh, the uh, rain is coming in sideways, so and lots of lightning. So I didn't really uh, want to work on savers this evening because I see the power goes in and out. This will be an interesting video, I bet, for everybody. Um, this is uh, Mad Cow's one of his savers, uh, also known as. Uh, Genesis custom sabers. Um, I recently got this from, well, not recently. It was last year when I acquired this from Judge Sabersmith. It originally had a Crystal Focus in it, and it has had a couple of other different soundboards in it as well. It had a 2.0. You can see that in my video library. It's with Darth Bane. It also got an upgrade of a, a 2.1 in it as well. Um, I. I was never really happy with the way that one uh, spun with the ultrasound in it. It just didn't really work and it was awkward. And that feeling kind of was with the, the crystal focus too, but not as pronounced as with the ultrasound. Um, what ended up happening was I needed the ultrasound, the 2.1, for a client. So I pulled it out of here and I ended up putting a Master Replica's uh, Anakin. table. Sorry, the cat's jumping up here. I told you it was going to be a fun video. Um, well, I took the uh, the Anakin out. I mean, I put the Anakin in, and I ended up switching the battery pack out to uh, a four-pack of, uh, I don't know if you can hear the thunder, but it, <laughs> it's pretty nasty here. A uh, four-pack uh, of nickel metal hydride AA batteries. I mean, AAA, excuse me. It had AAs in it. And that lightened the saber considerably. It made it a ridiculously fun saber to uh, spin, and it's become basically the the saber I pick up and toy around with all the time. That's why it's not shiny at all, hardly, <laughs> because I handle it daily. Um, here I'm just going to show you the vent, and then I'm going to show you the actual internals of the saber. I'm going to take it apart right in for your, you guys to see on camera here. I'm not going to put the uh, blade in all the way because that's the kill key and you can see the saber's on. It's a nice bright P4 blue. Turn the lights off real quick or maybe the lightning will do it for me. It didn't. Right, the switch is this right here. It's just a little slider switch. Okay, now I'll take the blade out and I'm gonna have to uh, lose the stand and go at it like that. Trusty little Allen key set. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is remove this. That holds the pommel on. Let's see if this is the right one. It is. Okay, the next one, there is only one screw holding the emitter section on, and it's inside there. It's very small. I think it's the smallest one I have, if I recall correctly. Nope, apparently it's the next size up. Maybe I should have rehearsed. Yep. Don't need to turn it in too far, that's about it, and it will come right out. Okay. Alrighty. So we have our three pieces. This is how uh, Mad Cow uh, wired it. He put little labels on everything and it's all in quick disconnects. It's very easy to unhook, which we're going to do right now. And then we're going to slide the body off. And there is the electronics. I put some plastic rings around it 
so it wouldn't uh, move around and bash inside the hilt. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, peel some of this stuff off so you can actually see some of the internals a little bit. I don't know how much you're going to be able to see. Well, anyway, there there is the uh, the board, and that's how Mad Cow did the wiring. He did a little quick disconnects throughout, like this four pin one. That's the switches, and that's the LED. Here is the uh, clash sensor. Putting it right here makes it a lot more accurate. As the closer you can get it to the uh, the blade the better when you are building a saber. Okay, I can't take this one off because it's glued on because I wanted to make sure it stayed in place and protected the, uh, the soundboard when I was uh, swinging around and bashing it up. Rattle, rattle, rattle. Okay, up here at the top, I wanted to show you something else. This actually had two switches on it. This one uh, acorn nut right here was the auxiliary switch and this uh, was a slider switch originally. I just put another in there to hold it on, in place and there is the slider switch. It's a really, a really great design the way he did it. This holds the um, the LED unit in place, and that's I'm not going to go that far into taking it all apart because some of that stuff is the way uh, is kind of a Mad Cow trade secret, and I think he would be uncomfortable with me um, showing it off in a YouTube video. Okay, let that back together. I'm going to go ahead and put the, uh, the whole saber back together just to show you how quick it is. This is why this is my uh, go-to one for putting uh, trying out new soundboards and stuff because it's fairly easy. There's the screw. We just need to line those up. And let's see if I can get this right the first time. Let's see. That only took two tries or so. Okay, now for the pommel. Here you can see how he's got the recharge port and the speaker is back here. It's held on by this little uh, ring and some uh, uh, epoxy that I put on there. Since these are all labeled, okay. The battery right here, here we go. I hope. I might have just blown the speaker all the pieces. Looks like everything's wired up. Let's see if I uh, damage the speaker just for fun. Apparently not. Okay, so we know it works now. We can just uh, go ahead and button her on up. Make sure no wires are pinching. Oh, there it is. Okay, now we put our uh, cover tech knob back on. Proper key. So it's now back together. The kill key is back in. 
well, and a nice little stand. And that's about it. Um, if you ever get a chance to purchase a uh, Genesis Custom Saber, I strongly encourage you to do so. His work is excellent, and no, this is not for sale.